Hello, welcome to another video. We're supposed to use the quotient rule when we have a rational expression to differentiate, but we're using first principles for this problem. Once you know the definition of the derivative from first principles, the essential thing is know that nothing changes. This function you have sine 2x over 2x minus 5 must be copied here exactly. And this h does not change. So that's where you should always start whenever you do this. So you want to say that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of... Now watch what I'm going to do. Here I'm going to write my h. On the right hand side I'm going to write minus and copy exactly what's here which is sine 2x over 2x minus 5. Exactly what I have on the right. And on the left, I'm going to repeat the same thing, but everywhere there's an x, I'm going to write x plus h. That's all. So here, it's going to be sine x plus 2 times x plus h. So let's do it this way. Divided by, and the bottom two, I'm going to write 2, but I'm going to write x plus h, then minus 5. This is what you now need to simplify using algebra and in the future apply any trig function that you know to simplify it. And that's it. If you can do this from here on, you're good. So let's start. Firstly, you do not want to have a rational expression within a rational expression, so we want to get rid of these two denominators first move. And generally, what I suggest you do is you just take these two denominators, make it a product. Let's write this together like this. Okay? And use it to multiply each term on top and bottom, and you, essentially what you'll find is that f prime of x becomes the limit as h goes to 0 of, if you multiply the top and bottom by these two, you'll end up having this as if you're doing cross multiplication. This multiplies this, so you're going to have 2x minus 5 times sine, I'm going to write this as 2x plus 2h, okay, minus, then you're going to do the same thing here, it's going to be uh, 2x plus 2h minus 5, Sorry, I had to squeeze this one in, sine 2x, sine 2x, okay, all divided by the entire denominator, which is h times 2x minus 5 times 2x plus 2h minus 5. Now look at it very well. We have to do sine a plus b equals sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. That's the next thing we got to write. Now, it's going to stretch out a little, but we can cope. And I may have to rewrite this because you see, I need to generate another 2x minus 5 so I can factor this out. So instead of writing 2x plus 2h, I may write 2x minus 5 plus 2h so that I can factor things out. Let's see how that works out. Okay, um, and this is something you should always look out for whenever you have a polynomial involved in this kind of expression. You want to make sure the polynomial stays or you might break it down eventually. So this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of, it's going to be sine 2x minus 5. Um, and then this is going to be I'm going to be multiplying this by sine 2x cosine 2h, okay, plus cosine 2x sine 2h, okay. So I'm done with this expansion. Now I'm going to write this as minus, let's write it here, minus, this is going to be now see what I'm going to write. I'll rewrite this as 2x minus 5 plus 2h sine 2x. Okay, now you're going to understand why I did that very soon. All divided by h times 2x minus 5, 2x plus 2h 
minus 5. Okay. Now, well, my board is small. That's why you see me going two lines. <laughs> this doesn't look neat, okay, but I have to. Now, it's essential that you recall this. I've said this many times. There are two identities we'll always use. We need to know that the limit as theta goes to um, zero of sine theta over theta equals one. That's an essential key to what we're about to do. And you also need to know the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine theta minus one over one, sorry, over theta rather, over theta is equal to zero. These two are essential because that's what helps you clear things up. Every time you do this, you have to use either both of them or one of them. Okay, it's essential you remember that. So now, let's simplify. I need to create something like this where the argument of sine is in the denominator also, or the argument of cosine minus one, this theta has to be the same thing as this, that I can say this goes to zero, this goes to one. So look very well and see what manipulations you could do because that's the only way out. So here, I know that I have, what did I write here? It's just two X minus five, there's no sign, I'm sorry. It's terrible, okay. That's what we have. <laughs> That's why it took so much space. I was adding what wasn't there. Okay. I know that I have sine 2x cosine 2h. For me to use this, I will need another cosine. I would need not cosine 2h. I would need minus 1. I need to look for a place to subtract 1. There's a minus here. This has sine 2. This has 2x minus 5 sine this. So if I can find this somewhere else with a minus sign preceding it, then I can factor it out of this and I'll, leave, I'll be left with cosine 2h minus 1. And it looks like I can create that here. Okay, so then I generate this. And this one is usually easy. This is usually the tough part. And that should be my focus now. So I'm going to say this is equal to the limit the limit as h goes to zero. Now let's do some distribution. It's gonna be two x minus five times this. So it's gonna be two x minus five sine two x, two x cosine two h. Let's write this out plus two x minus five Cosine 2x sine 2h, cosine 2x sine 2h, okay? And then I'm going to break this into two. So this is going to be 2x minus 5 sine 2x. Let's write it here. Minus 2x minus 5 sine 2x. And then this is going to be, well, this minus, when you distribute it to this, is going to be minus also. 2h sine 2x. Beautiful. Now that was the toughest part of this. And now in the denominator, I still have this part, h times 2x minus 5, 2x plus 2h minus 5. Okay. Now see how clean this is going to get now. I'm going to combine this with this. And watch, if I combine this with this, I can factor out 2x minus 5 sine 2x. So I'm going to have the limit as h goes to 0. Then I have 2x minus 5 sine 2x. And what's going to be left will be cosine 2h, cosine 2h. And here I'm, I'll be left to just minus 1. And then I go to the next one. I've taken care of this and this. So what I have left are just these two. And these two don't have anything in common. Look, this and this have nothing in common. So it means I'll just write them separately. So this is minus 
2x minus 5, cosine 2x, sine 2h, minus 2h, sine 2x. Okay, nothing in common. Nothing in common. And now, since I have separated them, I can essentially just plug this under each of these and take care of the limit individually. And that's going to make our life a lot easier. Now, if you really follow what I do, you would already see some answers popping up. Okay? Now, essentially, all you need for this to go to zero, for this over this to go to zero, maybe I should put the H on the side so you can see it. You know what? I'm going to put the H on the side. So I move the H to this side. Now you can see what I'm saying. Essentially, a giant parenthesis, so the limit applies to everything in here. Okay. Firstly, let's take care of the ones that can be cancelled out. Let's cancel out first. Let's cancel this out. These two will cancel out. Okay? Um, what else cancels out? Oh, this cancels out. And this H cancels this H out. I fixed this because it was a plus. Somehow, I forgot to transfer the plus and put a minus, so that's a plus. So, let's go here. Now, what I'm going to do now is rewrite it in such a way that you can clearly see these popping out. Okay? So, here we're going to have the limit as h goes to zero. Now, I'm going to put these two together, and then I'm going to put the h just the way I've written this now. So, you're going to have um, 2x over, this is going to be 2x plus 2h minus 5 multiplied by cosine 2h minus 1. I decided to put these in parentheses so you know it's just the argument. It's not the entire 2x minus 1, okay, over h. Now, see, we need this and this to be the same. So what I'll do is I'm going to, so that this and this are the same, I'm going to multiply this by 2 and cancel out this 2 by putting the 2 here. Okay, or you can put the 2 here and just get rid of this one. It's the same thing. It doesn't change the function because this 2 can cancel this out. Okay, and that's our limit there. We go to the next one. It's going to be plus. I'm going to rewrite this nicely because sine 2h has an h to deal with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll write this as cosine 2x divided by this term. It's going to be 2x plus 2h minus 5. Then I multiply it by sine 2h over h. I do the same thing, multiply the bottom by 2, multiply the function by 2. So I know this goes to 1. And the last part is going to be 2 sine 2x divided by 2x minus 5. Then you have 2x plus 2h minus 5. Nice. Giant brace. Okay. What would this be? We're taking limits now. I know this will go to zero. So this is essentially zero multiplied by 2 sine 2x over, this is going to be 2x minus 5 because this is going to go to zero. Do I need to simplify this? No, because I could just say all of this goes to zero. Okay? Plus, so let's put this in parentheses. Plus, if we deal with this, this is going to go to zero. This is going to go to one. This entire expression is going to go to one. So you're going to have two cosine two x divided by two x minus five. And that's it. And we go to the third one. Let's put this also in parentheses. Do we have to? I just want to make you see where each of them came from. Okay? Um, and what would this be? This is the only h, so there's no trick to perform. We're just going to make this go to zero. So we're, on top, we're going to have 2 sine 2x. And under, we're going to have 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5 because this goes to zero. So that would be squared. So essentially, this is already zero. So we just need to deal with these two parts. And we can make this the same as this by multiplying the top and bottom by 2x minus 5. So our final answer is going to be 2 times 2x minus 5 
cosine 2x minus the top 2 sine 2x, okay? All divided by 2x minus 5 squared. And this is the derivative of f from first principles. Never stop learning. Those who stopped learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.